live e-commerce they are doing the live streaming on the e-commerce platforms it's just so convenient the audience does not have to switch platforms so the the watching to be transformed into purchasing is is very fast and i think that's what can support the vertical of live e-commerce to continue grow my name is Jenny Lu. I'm currently a PhD candidate in the USC Annenberg. And my research interest uh, lies generally in rhetoric, social media entertainment, and environmental communication. Our chapter focused on the Chinese live streaming industry. We uh, look at the different verticals and how creators like, harness the uh, live streaming platform, the different affordances, uh, as well as the different fan community engagement since different verticals of live streaming like uh, social eating. Uh, like gaming, uh, they have different kind of features in terms of the fan fan communities, uh, what they want and what they're like. Especially given the influence of a pandemic, the integration of live streaming and uh, the e-commerce become um, even hotter these days and more critical to um, people that live in, in China, especially during the pandemic. The practice of live streaming in China is very different from that in, in the West. Um, so in the West, uh, the largest, like the most successful um, live streaming platform would be Twitch, which is a gaming community platform. But in China, the, the genres, the verticals are definitely more diverse. And the platforms, the, in terms of amount, there are more. In this chapter, we use the critical media industry study. Uh, it was coined by Timothy Heavens, Amanda Laws, and uh, Sarah Tinnick in 2009. So we want to examine both precarities and agencies uh, that creators um, have or, or they're facing in their careers. And this actually requires we um, bring the macro level political economy and the culture study closer together. Political economy, it focused on the large macro level structures. There will be like less focus on the individuals, the, the creators. And with the culture study given, it's focused on the dark side of uh, the story. I think the agency of the uh, creators is gonna be ignored if we only use the uh, culture study, critical media industry study um, approach, combine the advantages of culture study and the political economy framework. So guided by this framework, we, we adopted the multi-vector approach. The vectors we were looking uh, were industrial, social, technological and economic, and the political. For the industrial vector, we focused on game streamers, the game publishers, the esports tournaments, and live streaming platforms. They are integrating more and more. Um, so in China, the uh, largest uh, game live streaming platform are Huya and uh, Douyu right now. Besides the games, they are also developing uh, more verticals and genres to expand the business beyond the game live streaming. For the social vectors, we look at the so-called pretty girls and lonely guys in, in China. Live streaming has empowered the female live streamers to the sense that they can make money and uh, have a better life. But at the same time, they the gender imbalance and the phenomenon that more women going to big cities for training and opportunities in China has left uh, millions of Chinese men um, like partnerless with uh, little opportunity for family formation and uh, romance relationships. So they watch live streaming to find a virtual girlfriend. For the technological and economic vector, we focused on the social plus model. That is a social media platform plus a, a different industry or different area. So Wang Hong integrate the features and the affordances of a social networking platforms with e-commerce uh, and especially the advancement of a mobile payment system like Alipay, WeChat Pay is very convenient for this integration to happen. And the last vector is a political vector. So live streaming creators and uh, platforms need to negotiate between 
market and the government regulation and play the、uh, edge ball content, what we call 擦边球 in in Chinese. So it's a kind of like borderline、um, acceptable online expression,、uh, so they can get more views、uh, and at the same time avoid being banned by by the government. Certainly, the creative labor exists before social media, and I would say before social media, it was more like limited in terms of the way of interaction,、uh, especially limited by the physical distance. So, if we go back a, a bit further here to like ancient China, for instance, the opera singers they can be regarded as、uh, creative laborers. And their fans need to watch the performance in the same location with them. With live streaming, it's certainly like free communities from the physical distance,、um, and the creators and the fan communities they can interact more directly at the same time、uh, without being the same location. So, to this sense, social media platform definitely provide affordances for a better engagement with the fan community. I'm doing a research on China's esports industry, but with a focus on the virtual industry's integration with the urban development, the physical space. Since lots of cities in in China, big cities, small towns, they are devoting to this building esports. Whether it's a center or the whole city, just gonna name the like after the esports, and they are attract different esports. Teams to be there in the city to engage with the local fan communities. And another research I plan to do is also related to creator culture. During the pandemic, there there were lots of what we call 科普 It actually means to popularize science and the technology. Those knowledge on on social media, people are、like、staying at home and and they want to know、uh, the information and the knowledge about the virus. This genre can be particularly、uh, interesting and、uh, is is significant these days. And I will continue to explore that. Thank、you